So I've set up, I've chosen the correct trig ratio, and I've set up my ratio. Now, always make sure that this is a whole number, so it's sitting on top of an imaginary one. Hi, Mr. Eve. Um, I'll take it later, or can you just tell them to take a message? Thank you. Okay, so can someone tell me what I should do next? Yes, because I have essentially a fraction and another fraction separated by an equal sign. So whenever you have that situation, we're going to cross multiply. So I have x times my cos 35 is equal to 10 times 1, which is 10. Now, I am trying to solve for my x value, but the cos 35 is getting in the way. So how do I get rid of that cos 35, Jerry? Yes, I, good. I'm going to divide both sides by cos 35 to get rid of it from the left-hand side. So this eliminates with this. Remember that your calculator, whenever you're doing these trig ratios, your calculator, you have to check, is in degree mode. If your calculator is not in degree mode, you're not going to get the right answer, which is why I posted the answer key. Use the answer key, because if you're going along the wrong track, then uh, you're not going to even know, and you won't get the right answers if your calculators are not in degree mode. So can someone tell me what x is equal to? What is x equal to? It's 10 divided by cos 35 on your calculator. Yep. Very good. 12.2 centimeters, whatever they gave us in the beginning. So that's our x value. And you're always going to follow this method when you're trying to solve for the length of a side. It never changes. Now, uh, we could have used hypotenuse over adjacent instead of adjacent over hypotenuse and used my secant function. But the problem with that is we, uh, you can't punch secant of 35 degrees in your calculator. So we, we would have had to convert it to cosine anyways. So when you're solving for the length of a side or the length of the angle, if they're not giving you a cosecant, secant, or cotangent, don't use it. If they are giving it to you, translate it back in terms of cosine, sine, and tan. We always want to go back to our basics, go back to the primary trig function. Even when we do identities later on, you're going to see that the basics are always key. Okay. This time, we are going to solve for the measure of the angle, okay? Measure of the angle. So, first of all, um, let's say I want to have my side. This is going to be my C. This is going to be my B. And this is going to be my angle A. And I have... Okay. First thing I'd have to do is label my triangle, but in order to label my triangle, I need a starting point. Can someone tell me what my starting point is for this particular question? Starting angle. William, take a okay. shot at it. Okay, maybe Jared. Oh, okay, sorry. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good note, thing to notice. So let's move this around. I want to solve for angle B, so we're going to make this A, B, C, like that. Okay. So how do I solve? What is my starting point? What is my starting point going to be, Ryan? Yes, angle B is my starting point because that is the angle that I've been asked to find. So Ryan, help me uh, label this triangle. So what is this side going to be called? This one? So the side that is not touching the starting point is my opposite. And the side that is touching my starting point, good, my adjacent. I also know this is my hypotenuse, but we really only have to label the sides that we're dealing with right now. Okay, 
So we're not using question mark, check mark this time because question mark is, uh, we know what we're solving for. We're solving for the angles. It has nothing to do with sides. So to help us set up or figure out what formula to use, we're using the check mark, check mark method. Whenever you're solving for the measure of an angle, it's check mark, check mark, because that means what are the names of the two sides that I know, okay? So I know my opposite, and I know my adjacent. So what trig formula, what trig, yeah, primary trig ratio do I need to use, William? 10, good. So 10. 10 of my starting point is equal to opposite over adjacent. Let's just double check. I don't know my measure of my angle B, so this is going to be my unknown. However, I know my opposite and I know my adjacent, so there is only one unknown in my problem. Okay. In some ways, this is an easier question than solving for a side because no cross multiplying is required. Uh, if I fill in what I know, tan of angle B is equal to 21 over 11, opposite over adjacent. There is no cross multiplying because there's no algebra on the right-hand side of my equation. 21 over 11, that's an operation, that's division. I can punch it into my calculator and I figure out that tan B is equal to 1.9. So does that mean my answer, angle B, is 1.9 degrees? No, that doesn't mean. We have to do an extra step to move from tan B to angle B. Does anyone remember what that step is called? William. Yes, we're going to use the tan inverse. And that's actually a button on your calculator. So even now, to remind myself that's a button on my calculator, I always draw a big box. Tan inverse, so tan to the negative 1. And it looks like a button on the calculator that you're pressing, so that reminds you. Tan inverse of 1.9. Angle B is equal to the tan inverse of 1.9. So that means that angle B is equal to 62.3 degrees. Notice there is no cotangent inverse on your calculator. So if you wanted to solve, if you're given a trigonometric expression, say you were given cotangent of B is equal to 11 over 21, and you were asked to solve for angle B, I would convert this to tan of B, 11 over 21 divided by 11 over 21, you're just flipping it to 21 over 11, and then you solve from there because there's an actual tan inverse button on your calculator. I also want to uh, remind you guys that um, this doesn't really apply, but for the last problem, I see a lot of people trying to replace the cos 35 right away with the decimals on your calculator. That's not the case. Think of trigonometry as a very sophisticated operation. We want to keep the cosine. You, anyone can plug something onto their calculator, but to do the algebra, it's quite tricky. And if you're trying to cross multiply with a bunch of decimals, it can look very messy and it, cannot, it doesn't look sophisticated anymore. So always keep the cosines and the sines until the very last step when you're plugging it into your calculator, okay? Do not substitute decimals until the very last step. Same thing over here. 21 over 11, that's okay that I converted it, but uh, you want to keep the 10, 10, 10, 10 until the very last step, and that's when it, you see the numbers. Don't get rid of the sine, cosine, and 10, okay? Okay, so that concludes my review of side and angle. Now we're going to move to a concept, which I'm warning you is not going to be the easiest thing in the world. However, if you are going to be going into functions and calculus, this is a concept that you are going to have to master, and it's very simple now. It gets much more complicated in grade 12. So don't uh, frustrate yourself. It's like I loved it, loved it, loved it. So if you need any help, this is the best thing in high school. So I love helping with these questions, and you are going to need help. You need someone to walk you through it. I always need someone to walk me through it, and then you start seeing um, or finding your way. 